Celia, the concept of some afterlife is part of many religions. In Christianity in particular, we have the eschatological vision of a resurrection. What is a resurrection? What's in it? How can we begin to understand that? I think you've touched on one of the really interesting questions, especially in relation to science, because of course, when it comes to the resurrection, a traditional understanding of resurrection defies what science knows, and you can't avoid that. It's one of those issues which you can't escape. Uh, but at the same time, I think that if we cut out the resurrection, which some theologians who are informed by science attempted to do, then you cut out the heart of Christianity, and you also cut out the essence of hope, as it were, for the, for the next world, which is what Christianity um, is all about. Uh, so, uh, so for me, I would hold to a traditional understanding of resurrection, which means I believe in the, in the bodily resurrection of, of Jesus Christ. And that, as it were, sets the stage for the resurrection of, the, of our earthly bodies. Not, we're not just um, raised as spirits, we're, we're raised in bodily form. But I don't think that bodily form is the same as the form in which we live today. It's rather like the, some of the other worlds that we read about in fiction stories for, for children. They're, if you like, it's on a different plane of reality, and that's how I understand it. So I, so I see there's a, there's a resemblance, but it's on a, it's on a different plane of reality. Push, push it further. What would that mean for, for me if I die? Uh, is it something that happens immediately or at some, some indefinite time in the future? Uh, will I have individual consciousness? Uh, what will I feel like? Will I do anything? Mm -hmm. I think all those kinds of questions are mysteries. Um, I think we're only given hints at about what, might, what it might be like in this other world, as it were. Um, but there is, if you like, heaven and, heaven and earth are, cre are, cre are created. In other words, heaven isn't a non-created form in which we live. So we're promised, um, we're promised eternal life, but that's not life into infinity. So I, I would say that there is some sort of ending that will probably happen um, at the end of, after, in the resurrected life as well. What, what, what is the difference between we're promised eternal life but not into infin infinity? What's well, I would say that the, the, the God has infinite life, whereas we're promised eternal life, which means that we're promised a life that, that has what seems to us an in, indefinite life. But I don't think it necessarily means that we have infinite life in the same way that God has infinite life. Well, God has infinite life in, 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 uh, in retrospect. I mean, we, mm -hmm. we, we started at a finite time, and yeah, that's right. theoretically God did so not. So God, God is outside time in that sense. So, but we're, we will never sort of be outside time in mm -hmm. the same way that mm -hmm. God is outside time. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm trying to say. Um, so, uh, so I would say that, that we, we don't, all we're given is, is hints of what that might be like through the lives of saints, through the lives of, of Jesus Christ, uh, who we know and experience as risen from the dead. That, that's the way we're given hints of what this eternal life and, is and like. And we will have our personal identity as opposed to melding into some cosmic consciousness that yes. Eastern religions might teach. I don't like this. I mean, some the Christian theologians have talked about some sort of merging of consciousness amongst people. Mm -hmm. I find that very dissatisfying somehow. I don't, I don't find it convincing that my life will have any meaning if I'm just a merged consciousness or just a memory in God or something like this. Mm -hmm. I think when it comes to other creaturely kinds, then it becomes more tempting perhaps to say that in some cases they may become a memory in God. Mm -hmm. But how far those creatures are resurrected individually, again, is a, is a problematic issue when you think of the millions and millions of creatures that have ever lived. But we're, we're not in a position to make all those kind of judgments. I do know that if I am living in a resurrected life, it's, if it's a life devoid of all the, the natural world in which we've found ourselves here, then it would be an impoverished life. Um, and I also think that the lives of creatures themselves are important to God. And so therefore, those creatures will have value in some shape and form in the, in the new life. It's an important uh, concept you're bringing up because uh, the transformation, the eschatology of the, the mm -hmm. hope of the future is not just about individual human lives, but it's about the whole of creation, if, that, mm -hmm. if this story be true. Mm -hmm. So what are the broader implications in terms of the universe in addition to other mm -hmm. creatures? Yeah, I think the, the, 
the idea of a, of a universe that's, I would say, eternal um, is something that we can think of if it's operating on another plane of reality. Um, what that eternity means doesn't mean to say that it's necessarily outside time, uh, but what, the way that sort of is spelt out in our own earthly life means a, re a renewed creation or a renewed earth rather than a completely new earth. So in other words, the, the implication is that, that something is remade in the process rather than, than not having any relationship at all with the earth in which we find ourselves. Certainly the scientific story of the universe looks like it, it will end in uh, a very deep freeze mm -hmm. with scattered radi radiation being all that's, that's left after mm -hmm. a, an expansion forever. Um, clearly, some change would have to be made if uh, if, if that scientific view uh, will, uh, will not be the case. I think that what you're dealing with in the scientific view of the deep freeze is millions and millions of years from now. And so I would say that that would still fit in with my understanding of eternal life. I think the ending of the earth as we know it is more likely to happen more suddenly through our own abuse of the natural world through climate change and so on. And so we may find ourselves in a situation where humans are no longer um, the only subjects or, or the, the main subjects of, of the earth. So, so I would say that the, the end of the, of the earth story as it's told in physics doesn't trouble me too much because it's so many millions of years away that, that would feel as it were like an eternity. Um, whereas what's more likely is a, a, a more likely, more dramatic end to the physical environment in which we find ourselves would be through, through something more that humans have done in relation to that earth. So what's the implication of all that to the resurrection? I think the, the implication of, of, of that is that, that we must hope for a renewed earth, as it were, within that sort of time span of, of the millions of years in which we find ourselves. Um, how that renewed earth takes shape and in the form in which it takes, I think is impossible to judge. But if you believe in the idea of parallel universes in the same way that some scientists are beginning to talk about, there may be another parallel universe in which uh, the earth, as it were, in its new form can, can be begin to unfold. Um, uh, we're only given hints in scripture about what the new heaven and new earth will be like, but it will be patterned in some way on the model which, which, which we've known in this earth. Um, so I, I don't believe in, in what I would call infinite life. I believe in eternal life. Um, but that etern the, the millions of years that the physicists talk about will feel like an eternal eternity. Um, it'll be experienced as eternity. We can't expect to, I don't think I want to go on for infinity. Um, in, the, in the way that God exists for infinity.